A very warm welcome to you and thank you so much for joining our Homeopathy 24-7 podcast. We are going to be speaking to an array of international guests who will share their knowledge and experiences of homeopathy with you. We will discuss all types of subjects such as remedies, symptoms and stories of health. No matter where you are with your homeopathic journey, we aim to inspire you on your quest to natural health and living. The podcast is brought to you by Mary Greensmith, the founder of Homeopathy 24-7, which is a global platform connecting you with a homeopath wherever you are in the world, 24 hours a day. So let's get started with today's chat. Please welcome Mary Greensmith. Hello and welcome to this week's podcast. We're going to answer questions about potency, dose, prescribing, especially for flu and colds. And you can hear I'm <laughs> I'm a little bit suffering at the moment. So I hope these questions and answers will really help you become more confident with your prescribing as we go through into the flu season. So let's talk about the questions that you have been asking. So our first question today is, what do we do with our prescription if we have an acute problem? And I thought this was a really good question for us to start with. So if you are already seeing a homeopath and you have been prescribed a remedy and you've been taking that either monthly or weekly or occasionally, whenever it is, and suddenly you have a cold or a cough or something's happened, you need an acute remedy. So what do you do? So the first thing I would recommend is that you contact your homeopath. You say, I have got an acute problem. Is it okay if I take an acute remedy here and um, see what they say? If they, if you, if you, um, they don't answer my answer would always be that your acute always takes precedence over your long-term um, suffering. So when you are solving long-term problems and acute happens, you have to just put aside the long-term problem and be treating your acute if you need it. Now, the reason I say that is because if you are having constitutional prescribing, that is probably enough to see you through your acute. So always before you prescribe yourself a remedy for an acute problem, ask yourself, actually, is my body doing what it's meant to do? Is my body getting through this acute issue as quickly as it possibly can? Because a lot of the time, our bodies don't need any help to do what they are meant to do. And sometimes we are too quick to jump in with a an acute remedy, thinking, I can't, you know, I need a remedy. I've got this. I need a remedy. What remedy do I need? So first of all, before you do that, ask yourself, Actually, am I going through these symptoms at a decent rate? Is my body doing what it's meant to do? Because if that's the case, then you might not need a remedy. Remember that the homeopathic remedies are here to help your body do what it's meant to do. If your body is already doing what it's meant to do, if your immunity is good and you're working through the symptoms of the cold or the flu, then and it's bearable, then maybe you don't need a remedy. So that, that's the first thing. So what we're saying here then, if you are having a regular a remedy uh, you have been doing over the last few months and you get an acute problem, it might be sensible to stop what you're doing for the chronic issue and treat the acute problem that's come up. But we treat the acute problem that has just come up in exactly the same way. We have to collect a whole symptom picture. We have to then choose the remedy that is right for that symptom picture. We have to then decide on potency and dose and we have to then decide on when to wait, what are we expecting to happen? 
So let's go through those one at a time. What is a full symptom picture? Well, of course, what we want, we know that if, for instance, we start a cold with sneezing, sneezing continuously, then we know that we have to, we have sneezing. When is it better? When is it worse? Do we also have a sore throat? If we have a sore throat, what does that feel like? Is it better for swallowing or worse for swallowing? So it can worse in the evening, better in the evening. Is it worse in the morning? So all of these things are leading to finding all of the symptoms and the remedies, all of the different remedies, putting them in a funnel and allowing just the ones that have got all your symptoms to come through that we can then choose from. So whenever you're looking at the app that we've got, the Homeopathy at Home app or a different repertory, we're putting in as much information as we can and we're finding the remedies that have got most of our symptoms in order to find the symptom that's right. So, for instance, we're going to go with the sneezing. We're going to find that we know that there are at least 20 remedies. How can we get it down to two or three remedies? The only way to do that is to add more information to the pot and then disqualify some of those remedies when we know that that doesn't suit. So we're looking for the remedy which has the best symptom picture that matches our own. And we know then that that's the most indicated remedy. So we found the best remedy from our whole symptom picture. And now we're going to decide on potency and dose. Now, if this is something that is happening right now, one of your first and major considerations is, well, what have I got in the house or what can I get hold of today? Because if it's acute, you need the remedy today. So what have you got in the house? Which remedy is it? What potency is it that you have got? Now, to help you think about these acute symptoms, we have got homeopathy at home kits. We've got kits of 50 remedies and kits um, of 100 remedies, which are the most used remedies for acute symptoms. Mm -hmm. We also have got a kit for coughs, colds, flus and fevers. OK, so they, of course, are the most used symptoms. We want to put together some little mini kits of 10, but it's so difficult for us to choose 10 remedies when, you know, for you, you might need a different remedy. Or for your next cold or bout of flu, you might need a remedy that's not in that one. So it is really difficult for us to choose 10 remedies um, when with a cough, cold, fever and flu, you have so many different symptoms because we have ears, eyes, nose, throat, headache, we have fever, we have aching limbs, we have so many things going on that it's very difficult to get down to 10 or so remedies. So have a look in the link um, in the descriptions to see the different kits to see if they would be of use. And of course, look at the Homeopathy at Home app so that you have all of this information to hand on your phone when you need it. Now, so I would suggest you start with 30C. If you've had three doses and it is working, but not holding, you might consider going to a higher potency. So the rule of thumb is that a, a number of things could happen when you give a dose of the remedy. First of all, nothing might happen. If that's the case, just try another dose, just in case. If nothing happens at all, it's likely that it's not the right remedy. So you need to go back to the whole symptom picture and, and, and find the right remedy. Another thing that might happen after you take a remedy is that the symptoms get better, but then they come back. If that happens, take another dose of the same remedy at the same potency and do that up to three times. So it might be that you take another dose of the remedy after two hours or one hour, depending on when those symptoms recur. So the symptom goes away, 
and then it comes back. When it comes back, take another dose. After three doses, if that's still happening, we know the remedy's good. The potency, if you've got it in a higher potency, I would suggest that you take it in a higher potency at that stage. Another thing might happen when you take a remedy, and that is that the symptom goes away, but a new symptom occurs. Oh. And if that's the case, you need to retake the case. You need to collect up all the new symptoms now and find the right remedy for those. But first of all, as we said in the beginning, decide whether a remedy is needed because your body is obviously doing something. It's moved along. It might be a good idea before you take a new remedy to wait. Wait and see what your body can do. Wait and see what your body does do because it might not need any further remedies. So the other thing that happens is that the symptom goes away and now you have no symptoms. So in that case, you definitely just wait. You don't need to take another remedy. So when people ask what dose and what potency, we're asking what happens after you've taken the remedy. We cannot answer how often you need to take it until we know what happens after you've taken the remedy. Does that make sense? So if the symptom goes away and a new symptom arises, then you have to retake the case. But if the symptom goes away and then comes back again, you need another dose. So that's when we decide how often we're going to dose. If you've dosed the same remedy for three times, then you go up in potency. And as a rule of thumb, as I said, start at 30C, and if after three doses it's still recurring, go up to 200C. So there we are with symptom picture, potency, and dose, and how to decide on the remedy, how to decide on dosing, how often you're going to take the remedy, and how the, you're going to choose the potency that you're going to use. Now, for some things that are really high energy, we might be needing much higher potencies. For instance, toothache is a really intense pain, really high energy pain. And so it might be that you have a toothache remedy such as chamomilla, Merxol perhaps, um, there are a lot of belladonna you might have, you might have that in a higher potency in your kit at home because you know that when that occurs you're likely to need a higher potency for that remedy. Some things are much lower energy. When you become very tired and lethargic when you have flu, you might need to be going in at 30C and no higher. So as a rule of thumb, start with 30Cs and consider that you might need a few remedies in 200Cs that are really good for high energy. And if you look at our travel kit, you'll see that we have a number of remedies that are much higher potency because when traumas occur, that's when you're going to need a higher potency remedy. So in order to choose what you want to have in the house, have a look at these kits and go through. Okay, that's interesting. They're going to always say, Aconite, for instance, have it in a 30C and the 200, chamomilla the same because it's a high intensity remedy. Okay, so we've covered potency, we've covered doses. So let's have a look at the next question. Actually, we've answered this question as well. When do we know it's time to find a new remedy? And we know that that is the right time when the symptoms have changed. As soon as a new symptom occurs, we need to retake the case and find the remedy that suits the new symptoms. So whenever we see a change in symptoms, we know our body's doing its work. So we're going to wait. We're going to make sure that it's going to hold this. We're going to see because your body might continue to 
correct everything and and see you through these acute symptoms without any extra remedies. But if the symptoms become unbearable, then retake the case and find a new remedy. Now, this is when you might see that the actual prescribing books are really useful. These are books that we've put together that just give you indications of when you need to find a new potency or when you need to find a new dose. And they are books that you write all of the prescriptions that the remedies that you are taking for particular symptoms. Because when you come to this again, when your son gets flu next time, you've done all the work already. You know which remedies really work for him. I know with my husband, whenever he gets a cold, he sneezes continuously. And I know that if I give him a dose of Allium Sepa, it's going to work really well and really quickly for him. So it, all of the work that you do, if it is well recorded, is going to save you time and energy next time because you have got a great starting point. Check the symptoms, check you write down all of the symptoms and check you write down what happens when you give certain remedies because each person is going to be completely different to the next person. Now, this is a good question. What happens if I can't decide between two remedies? Now, quite often this happens because we haven't got quite enough information about either about the symptom or about the remedy in order to decide. And both remedies look as if they could be the right remedy here. What I would advise is pick one and go with that for at least two doses. If after two doses you have had no effect, then swap to the other remedy. Okay, so if you can't decide, don't decide. Just give one and keep the other on standby. It might be that other factors decide which is right. One is you've got that one in the house and you haven't got the other one. So you're going to start with that one whilst you get the other one. Now, if I'm prescribing for somebody, I might be saying, I want you to take this because you've got it, but I want you to buy in this because we might well need it by tomorrow. Make sure you order those extra remedies so you've got them in the house ready for tomorrow. If the symptom doesn't change enough to warrant giving that remedy, it's a great remedy to have in your first aid kit anyway. So don't worry about that. The remedies are not really expensive. The important thing is that you have got them in the house ready for when you need them. Does that make sense? So the last question for today on potency and dose for acute prescribing is are there certain remedies which we should keep in stock? And my answer to this is yes, please, if you possibly can, because one, it is so much easier for your homeopath to help you choose the right remedy if you have got a good stock. So look at the kits and see what you can get in and have in the house. Make sure you keep them dry, out of the sunlight and not near strong smells. Also, a very good point somebody pointed out the other day to me is that actually remedies and any medicines shouldn't be kept in the bathroom because your bathroom becomes more steamy and it makes sense to keep them in an atmosphere that's more dry. So if you have an office like this, it's just more perfect to keep your remedies in. Um, look at our kits. And all of those remedies have been specially selected and put together because they are so useful for you to have in the house. Now, a lot of kits, they don't come with an instruction manual. And there is a reason for that. Because of the licensing of homeopathy, we are not allowed to sell it with a book, with a manual. And that's why we create the information separately and we ask you to buy it separately. So you might have a really good book on homeopathy for acute prescribing. Or you might have the Homeopathy at Home app, which has got all of the information of the remedies in all of our kits 
And so that that goes with the kit and it's available on your phone wherever you are. You don't have to lug a heavy book around with you. So I hope that is helpful and I hope that you feel more confident now with your acute prescribing. I hope you've enjoyed today and I look forward to seeing you next week. Take care. I do hope you're enjoying these questions and answer sessions. It just means that we get the opportunity to talk to you in much more detail how we really want to answer the questions that you ask and give you more time and more explanation. Now, next week, I'm going to be talking to Kiara Corcoran. It's just always a pleasure to talk to Kiara. She's so passionate about homeopathy and helping people with homeopathy. We are going to be answering questions about homeopathy for post-operative um, situations, helping recovery after an operation. We're going to be talking about improving the appetite of your picky eaters. If you've got children in the family who hate lots of greens or different ve different vegetables, then we're going to be talking about what we can expect when we work with homeopathy and how we would address such a situation as a homeopath. We're also looking at probably irritable bladders. We're looking at painful shoulders and a few more questions we'll try and get in for you as well. I look forward to talking to you next week. I hope you can join us. I do hope you've enjoyed these episodes and I do hope you can subscribe to our channels. Now, there are various ways for you to listen to our podcast or watch it on video on YouTube. So whether it's iTunes, Spotify or YouTube, please do subscribe and please do leave us a review. If you leave us a review on these platforms, then more people will see our podcast. We just want more people to share the joy of homeopathy. It's a choice that everybody should know about. Please do everything you can to help us help more people. We hope you enjoyed today's episode and look forward to listening to our next one. Please don't forget to follow our podcast on your chosen channel and please do leave us a review so we can continue to share homeopathy with as many people as possible. If you do have any questions, please do reach out to us on any of our social platforms mentioned in the show notes. We at Homeopathy 24-7 hope to empower you on your natural health journey.